I received a complimentary review copy of Bellum Magica from the distributor, so thank you to Coiled Spring. Build an army of evil creatures, ransack villages, and raid opposing forces to steal their treasure. Recruit new warriors to increase your numbers and maximise your rewards. That's the hook. I'm Adam Porter. I design games and I like to review games on this channel with a particular focus on their success as a product. A game can be incredibly fun, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to capture the attention of players or serve its publisher well. In this series, I like to analyse each game on the basis of its central idea, but also its execution. In Bella Magica, you're tasked with amassing an army of evil warriors with the ultimate goal of gathering treasure. On your turn, you roll a d6, and the result of your die roll is going to affect all players. So before we proceed, each player in turn has an opportunity to force you to re-roll by spending a barrel. This sequence can go round the table a number of times before the final result is settled upon. Once the final result is agreed, every player uses it, and the number on the die corresponds to a number on the left side of your board, and you gain the indicated food and room tokens. You then compare the number of treasure maps corresponding to this number, and the player with the most gains a treasure chest. Then in turn order, players attack using the swords generated on the right hand side of the board. And attacks are often focused on the card locations at the centre of the table, ransacking villages for barrels, resources and treasure chests. You need enough swords to beat the defence value of the location. Alternatively, you can attack your opponents, and if you have thief symbols on your board, you could potentially steal treasure chests from them. Once all attacks are resolved, players can spend their resources to recruit new monsters to add to their army, slipping them under their existing cards to the left or right of their board, hence enhancing either their resource gathering abilities or their attacking power. When a player has 10 or more chests, the game ends and players flip over their chests to reveal the secret points value beneath, and the highest scorer wins. Now I struggled a little bit to identify the hook for Bella Magica. The hook is the thing which draws players in, and retailers. The thing that pushes a game ahead of its competitors and makes it stand out. It could be thematic, it could be mechanical. And in Bell and Magica's case, mechanically we're on fairly familiar territory. Roll dice on your turn, purchase cards to upgrade the rewards from these individual dice results. It's a similar system to that which we've seen in city builders like Machikoro and Dice City, as well as more recent games like Space Base and My Farm Shop. The defining feature of Bellum Magica is the decision you make when you take the card. Do I want this card to sit to the left of my board, powering up my resource gathering, or do I place it to the right, increasing my fighting abilities? It's a very slight twist to the standard formula, and it's not really enough to make this game feel fresh. So the thematic elements are doing all the heavy lifting here. I suspect if you're drawn to Bellum Magica, it'll be because of the beautifully illustrated fantasy setting, not because of the gameplay. Now that's not to say that the game isn't fun, it certainly is. The dice building mechanism gives the game momentum. Each turn is better than your last, more so in Bellum Magica than other similar games, because each new card upgrades every dice result to one degree or other, rather than simply upgrading a single number. This means that the game is pretty fast and pretty dynamic. You're going to feel that sense of forward motion. Your turns will become more powerful and productive as you play. But as snappy as that central mechanism is, the rather odd barrel system whereby players force each other to re-roll their dice can bog the game down, particularly at higher player counts. The problem is, in the absence of a graspable mechanical hook, we're relying on the theme of the game to do all the work. And the theme is well realised here, but hardly new or innovative. We have gorgeous artwork throughout depicting a wide range of fantasy wrong-uns. And the twist is, we're playing as these bad guys, ransacking villages and looting their stuff. It's the same twist we've seen in Dungeon Lords and Boss Monster, but in Bella Magica, it's really just sleight of hand. The truth is, we could be heroes, raiding dungeons, with no change to the gameplay whatsoever. I'm not saying that's a better theme, or that the decision to make us evildoers is a bad idea. It's just that it's not a strong hook. Everything about the package feels middle of the road. But I'm getting ahead of myself. My analysis is usually more structured than this, so let's give Bellum Magica its fair shot and run it through my usual analysis process. So every game makes a promise, and our first experience with a game is picking up the box or seeing the box art on screen. 
the package leads us to make assumptions about the experiences contained within, and your game has to deliver on these promises. A really great cover tells us what we're going to be doing and how we're going to feel. Bella Magica was a game suggested for me by the distributor. It wasn't one that I'd heard of before it landed on my doorstep, so I can give you a fairly authentic report of my assumptions from checking out the box. So firstly, great art. Gorgeous, in fact. I was excited to find out what it was all about. Generic fantasy, and there's a goblin standing up prominently in the bottom corner. The monsters seem to be surrounding some sort of castle or citadel. The title, Bella Magica doesn't really give me many clues. I mean, I studied Latin for two years from the age of 11, and it's long since forgotten. But it doesn't take a genius to know that there's gonna be some magic involved. A quick Google Translate reveals that Bella Magica means magic war. They've gone the Terra Mystica route here. They've taken a generic phrase, translated it into Latin, and there's your mysterious sounding title. Well, it works. I mean, it is intriguing, but it doesn't tell me much. My expectation from the cover was that Bella Magica was probably a tower defense game with a focus on spell casting. The blue-orange logo is a seal of quality that I trust, and the stunning artwork also suggested a quality product. So I was excited by the cover, but I was a little bit uneasy that I was essentially going in blind. Of course, it turned out that my assumptions about the theme were completely wrong. In my engagement ladder analysis, each game is scored between 0 to 3 in 5 different categories, and a score of 10 or above indicates a truly engaging game, one which is likely to be a real favourite with me. For thematic immersion, Bella Magica scores 1. The artwork really helps to lift this game, but I don't feel hugely evil while I'm playing it. I don't really get many options to do nasty stuff, but I am surrounded by images of ghastly creatures and that can't help but suck me in a bit. But dice rolling games are generally fairly abstract affairs, and this is no different. The monsters aren't afforded any personality, the barrel system makes no thematic sense, and even the resources are generic – food, shields, and runes. For interaction, it's a two. We constantly get in each other's way, spending barrels to re-roll dice, stealing each other's chests, recruiting the monster another player wanted for themselves. But I haven't given it a full three marks because honestly, I found the interaction a little bit annoying. The barrel system can be frustrating and it can really slow the game down. For stress and challenge, Bella Magica scores one. The game isn't really full of any tension. Some games keep you engaged by never quite allowing you to do all the things you want, always keeping your rewards tantalizingly at arm's length. But not so in Bella Magica. The game is generous in its rewards and you're gonna be getting good stuff on every turn. And that's where Bella Magica excels. It gives constant feedback to the players. Like a mobile game feeding your addiction with bells and whistles, bonuses and rewards, in Bella Magica you constantly get given stuff. Food, barrels, runes, swords, shields, treasure chests. You don't have to wait until game end to see who's winning. It's all right there in front of you every single turn. Spending a few turns building out one side of your board, or prioritising one specific type of reward, and then seeing those preparations pay off big time in a later turn is really satisfying. So Bella Magica scores a 3. And finally, for meaningful decisions, well, we're back to a 1 again. The game is extremely dependent on chance. You can play the game cleverly, but that's no guarantee that you're going to do well. Your fate is dependent on the dice rolls and how much you're targeted by the other players. So Bella Magica scores 8, which gets it pretty high up that ladder. It hasn't reached the highest rung, it's not quite enough to declare it a classic, but the score is indicative of the fun contained within the box. It really is a lively, engaging game. Briefly looking at my customer journey map and plotting some potential pain points, we'll start with onboarding. So the rule book is pretty clear, although there are some clunky translations which threw me at first. For example, treasure maps are referred to as treasure cards, which is awkward in a game full of actual playing cards. And there's some confusion around the sequencing of certain events. But it is simple enough to crack on and assume that you've got the gist without any worries about misinterpreted rules throwing the game balance. The spending of barrels to force opponents to re-roll can slow the game down, and the sliding of cards beneath one another is surprisingly difficult and messy depending on the surface that you're playing on. So gameplay is fun, but it's not super smooth. 
The game clips along at a fair pace though, and the final points reveal when you flip your treasure chests is exciting. But it's also a bit unfair. The points for each chest are randomly allocated, with a skewed distribution so that the gold chests generally score more than the metal chests, which generally score more than the wooden ones. Nonetheless, a lot is left to the luck of the draw. So let's move on to my product design checklist. Is Bellum Magica innovative? Well, no, I think we've already covered this. Both thematically and mechanically, it feels like well-worn territory. But does it fulfill a need? Again, no. There's no obvious gap in the market that this game is plugging. No experience offered here which hasn't been seen before in other similar games. So is there scope for this game to grow with its user? Again, no, not really, I don't think so. I mean, after the first game, you're going to have seen most of what the game has to offer. That's not to say that you won't want to come back for more. It's chaotic and lively enough that simply switching up the players will give a slightly different experience, but there's not much to explore here. The game could expand in a variety of ways if it found a fan base. There's plenty of design space in those upgrade cards and their powers, the rewards from the looted villages and the player interactions. But Blue Orange is not a company known for its expansions, so I'd be surprised to see it actually happen. All that remains to do is plot Bella Magica onto my idea execution matrix. So an exceptional commercial product has a brilliant central concept paired with outstanding execution. So how does Bell and Magica fare? Well, the idea is okay. We discussed earlier how much fun and engaging gameplay there is in that box, but the problem is that the core concept is so familiar. I don't see this game standing out above its competitors. So to turn this into a commercial success, we're reliant on Blue Orange executing the product immaculately, and I'm not sure that they've really succeeded. The artwork is fantastic. The components are great too. But the generic theme and setting, the confusing box art and title, they don't help the game to stand apart. So the game sits in the middle of my chart. Not sure it's going to be noticed among the thousands of new game releases, and sadly, I don't anticipate great commercial success for Bell and Magica. That said, if you're a gamer who couldn't care less about industry talk, you just fancy a lightweight interactive dice game with some great art and components, and a few laughs with your friends over a beer or two, well, I think you could do a lot worse than Bellum Magica. If you enjoyed this video, as always, please let me know in the comments, hit like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. All the best.